Well, hello, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be able to speak to both of you, Paul and June. Uh, I'm also, uh, before we even really get started, I want to say thank you so much for be able, being able to like address the situations that were happening when you guys were at Comic-Con. You guys wow. dedicated roughly 15 minutes of your time to be able to at least address what was happening in the real world. And that's something that most people chose not to do and to look away from, but you guys chose to face it head on. And I just want to say thank you and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank um, you. And I have to say, Paul actually started that conversation. I was just like, what are we gonna do? Paul started <laughs> that conversation. And so, yeah, yeah. Wow, I mean. We I, can't it, ignore what's happening in the real world. And um, and that day in particular was a, obviously a really tough one. It was, it was uh, the day that, you know, they buried R Richard Brooks and uh, it was all on our minds and it, and um, it's all on our minds every day and to not address it uh, felt irresponsible. So um, thank you for acknowledging that, but we're yeah. just, you know, trying to do our, trying to do our part. Well, I mean, it's great to know, to see that you acknowledge the fact that you have a responsibility, being able to be able to speak on it, mm -hmm. seeing that you have that platform and utilizing it is something that's very important. And I, I just want to say thank both of you for that. Thank you. Um, thank you. Now, I, I guess let's, uh, let's get into the meat of uh, the show right now and kind of discuss just some things about it. Now, June. Yes. Your character, uh, well, pretty much has watched over the Hellstrom family for years uh, and has seen and experienced a lot. When we even open up on the first episode, there's things that you're experiencing. And it's kind of a subtle nuance to let us know that, you know what, you, this isn't your first rodeo. Right. <laughs> and you've gone through a few things. Um, now, do you think that the foreknowledge of, you know, what you've experienced with the family definitely did help your character as far as like being able to work with them in this junction or juncture in their life. Yes, the, <laughs> because what it did, what it trained me to do was realize that I was always going to be surprised. I was never going to be 100% ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. I, I, what's fascinating, I mean, you're right. Even in that opening thing, it's just like, this is a person who has seen it all and still has the capacity to be surprised. That is, it speaks to the resilience of the character, mm -hmm. but her humanity as well. It's not been there, done that. It's been there, done that, ooh, you know? <laughs> and there's just something so magical about that. I think that, um, I think she, she is, the perfect person for this world because she's not over it. She is still fighting, you know, okay. because she has the ability to still feel. Oh. Do you know I what like I mean? That. I like that. She can still feel surprise. She can still feel other people's pain. She can still feel other people's fear. And she is, by God, she's going to fix it. <laughs> no, but that comes from being alive. Yeah. Exactly. I was going to say that comes from like some experience of having to deal with things and that life that you've lived. Now, your character kind of has to deal with science and faith or faith and logic in these yes. two things. And um, how is it for you? And did that, did knowing that kind of bit inform your performance? It really doing did. This character? It really did because neither can um, exist on its own without doing serious damage. Pure intellect, which dismisses um, what is right, what is moral, what is ethical, what is human, what is, does damage. Faith, pure faith, does damage because, and I don't think that faith is set up, I don't think that faith is set up to deny what is actually happening in the world. Faith is about, there is what you believe and here's how, the, how life is going to challenge you with all of that. You cannot, they cannot, one cannot exist without the other without doing harm. And this 
character is a beautiful combination of trying to figure it out every day because every day she knows she doesn't have the right answer 100 percent every day she has to ask am i doing the right thing that's what makes her a good person yep she's still asking and Paul, now uh, I hear that you're hearing these answers and you're like, oh, no, spot June on, it, spot on. <laughs> June put it beautifully. She put it beautifully. She checks herself every day and asks the question, am I doing the right thing? And boy, do I wish that 325 million people in this country had that same self-awareness to look in the mirror and go, am I doing the right thing? You know, are we doing the right thing here? Do we know what right and wrong is anymore? And where did our sense of that come from? Because if there are so many people on one side of the fence and we're on the other, don't you at, for one second have some kind of self-awareness to go, I wonder why they think the way they do. I wonder why we are in this situation. Why Th That desire to understand. And Dr. Hastings having a faith-based background, but then also a psychological background is the most emotionally and you know, psychologically equipped person on our cast to ask those questions. And that's why she is sort of the moral compass and the strength of this surrogate family on the show. Well, I'm hearing a through line when it comes to it concerning morality yeah. and yep. just what's right, what's wrong, who is right, who is wrong. Does that even exist in this world when you start to review and analyze what's happening with the characters? Absolutely. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. I No, no, <laughs> go ahead, you. go ahead. No, I, there is right and wrong. Mm -hmm. This world, and, and, and this world is such a reflection of the world we, the rest of us are walking around in all the time. There is right and wrong. That's what you do about it. Yep. You know, <laughs> I, 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 because there are, there are consequences when you make a choice, when you give over to this emotion versus that emotion. There are consequences, real life consequences. And we watch these characters experience the blowback and have to pick it up, pick themselves up and try and figure it out and start over every day. And that's where, that's what keeps them. That's what, it's what, it's their humanity. That's their, that's their humanity. They have not lost their humanity because there is in this world, right and wrong. There is. And it matters. And it matters. These characters on this show, you know, the show is about demons, right? Yeah. And when we talk about demons, we talk about the literal demons on our show, which are creepy and weird and disgusting sometimes. Um, but there are the metaphorical demons, right? There are the figurative demons there. And those things are fear and anger and prejudice and, and understanding where those things come from and what are the ramifications when we give in to those things. We're seeing that in the real world right now. You know, it is, we have a character on our show who is an antagonist, who is tortured by a very particular demon and and she could be a complete cartoon character and just ha 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 mustache twirling. But we, we took the time to give that character a backstory to figure out where that horribleness comes from. And it comes from anger. It comes from a person who was wronged and then let that anger consume her. And that is the, that is the origin story of that antagonist. And it, because life isn't as simple as like, those are the bad guys, these are the good guys, and the good guys are going to go win the bad guys. Like, we have to reach some level of understanding. We have to look at these demons, and we have to go, where do they come from? And how do they beat, how do, how do we beat them? How do they not consume us as, a, as individuals and as a society? And right now, as a society, we are plagued by some very real and ugly demons. And it's not enough to say we just need to do this and win the election. We got to understand where these things came from. We have to get 325 million people to look in the mirror and give some self-examination because we don't move forward unless we understand the why of things. It's not, it's not enough to just go, okay, well, that's done. And now we're moving on because someone else is in charge. It is a 
You know, it's a, it is a demon, a societal demon, and we have to unpack that. Well, thank you very much, Paul, June. My, my time's running short. I just wanted to say thank you guys for even allowing me to have this experience to speak to you guys. Oh, um, thank you so much. I, I love the pleasure, show, Daniel. and it, it was great speaking to you guys. Really wonderful to talk to you. Thank you. Great talking to you, Daniel. Thank you.